Who wants to live below their means? I want to live the best life I can possibly live. So I talk about this often. I use liability. I, if I want to buy a new Ferrari, I first buy an asset, and the asset pays for the Ferrari. I, I wanted a Rolls Royce. Why? Because I never had a Rolls Royce. I've had Bentleys. So I built an asset, and the asset then bought my Rolls Royce. Now I'm kind of bored with cars. So I don't have a guilty thing, is that I have financial education, which is what the Rich Dad Company teaches. And you can have the same thing too. You just have to stop listening to those school teachers who are poor. You know, most school, school teachers, like my poor dad, very good, good people, but they're so terrified of making mistakes. They want, they want a steady paycheck and they want a guaranteed pension. I don't think you can get rich from that point of view. Look at this chart here, it's called the cash flow quadrant. E and S, employee and self-employed. That was my poor dad. You know, they, these guys work for money. These guys are not capitalists. They work for money and they invest their own money. On the B and the I side is my rich dad side. That's the capitalist side. Capitalists use other people's labor and other people's money to get rich. Which side do you want to be on? I'd rather be on the capitalist side. So that's the only difference. It's a whole shift of mindset and education, but everybody can do it if you want to do it. And it was really hard because I, I didn't like, I'm, I'm actually a very shy person. Mm -hmm. So learning how to sell was the hardest thing I could do. But if I hadn't spent four years learning how to sell, I never made it here, I never made it here. Mm -hmm. So the entire time that you were here, you were preparing to jump to the other quadrant. Correct. Mm -hmm. So every job is not so much for the high paying job with job security. Yeah. For mo not, not everybody, you know, most people should have job security because mm -hmm. they're not designed to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. But if you're gonna be an entrepreneur, then you better take this job and say, well, which way am I gonna go? Yeah. Okay. So I knew my job at Xerox was to go here and here and here, yeah. not stay here. Mm -hmm. And I actually make so much money over here that I don't need job security, I yeah. need the money. <laughs> so re really that's the lesson. When you look at a job, you look at what can I learn mm -hmm. more than how much can I make. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest challenge. And if you, you look for a job where you can learn a lot, the harder the job, mm -hmm. the better it is, yeah. do you know? What makes something an asset a liability is the two, are the two most important words in business, cash flow. Which way is the cash flowing? So an asset, if the money is flowing into your income statement, it's an asset. So my rich dad would say, if money is flowing into your pocket, it's an asset. If money is flowing out of your pocket, it's a liability. So the average person, they go out and they buy a house, and say, oh, it's an asset but every month it's flowing straight to the bank. So your money flows straight to the bank. Not that intelligent. You know, I want the money to flow from the bank to me. So it flows to the bank. Or what they'll do is they'll buy a stock or a bond or a mutual fund and it's an asset and it flies sh straight to Wall Street. Not your asset, it's Wall Street's asset. And the third line, when you look under expense, first line is tax. So the average employee, like my poor dad, with a high paying job, the money comes in, goes straight out the taxes and to the government. Make sense? So when you, when you get a job, first line, taxes, second, mortgage to the bank, third, your 401k or your IRA, straight to Wall Street. <laughs> but you think they're assets. It's not, they're assets, but they're not your asset. So that's one of the big things my rich dad taught me is you gotta control your cash flow. You want the money flowing into your pocket, not out of your pocket. So the one last thing I'll show you here is this, is this is the asset column. This is what rich dad worked for. He worked for assets. He didn't want a job. And this is my poor dad here. He wanted a high paying job. Different mindsets. So today, you know, <clears throat> I, don't, I, I still go home to Hawaii. I see my relatives 
and they keep they call me Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, have you got a job yet? And I go, no, Auntie, I don't have a job. She goes, oh, too bad, you're unemployed. I said, yep. So their mindset is they've been programmed to be employees to work for the rich. And that's what my rich dad taught me. So it's all here in the financial statement, the rich work for assets, the poor and middle class work for money. Very different mindset. So I don't want a job, I just want the asset that produces income called cash flow. Not taxable. Not taxable. That's why the rich are getting richer. Let's start with this one first, keep it small. Is here you have, you go to school, get a job, you become an employee, but you learn nothing about taxes. Then you become a little entrepreneur, you start your little falafel shop business or whatever you start, right? So the self-employed, small business. And then you have big business, 500 employees or more, or I for an investor. So Tom, how much tax do employees pay? Well, typically if they're making a good salary, and this is, by the way, the same rates around the world, typically it's gonna be about 40%. 40%. And after the, ta the Trump tax cut, did that change much? Not much, it didn't. So if you're, a, you know, oh, I'm gonna start my own little business, I'm gonna you know, start my little pizza shop or my, my coffee shop, how much do these guys pay? Well, now, now it goes up because you're paying both your share of the taxes plus the employer share of the, the taxes because you've got both sides. So now it goes up as high as 60%. So when you hear a young person, an old guy like me say, I'm gonna start my own business, they don't think about taxes, do they? No, and it, in fact, this is the place where people get in trouble because over here, this, the money's being taken out of your paycheck. But here, you're responsible for your taxes, and so what happens is, is that you, you go, let's say you're successful with your pizza shop, right? All of a sudden, tax time comes around, oh no, I've spent all my money and I don't have money to pay the taxes, and people go out of business real fast here. Well, it is surprising because a lot of the millennials do want to start up their own small little business, right? And what they don't, they're not aware of is that they're going to be in the 60% tax bracket. Because taxes are your single largest expense. So if you're going to start your own business, you've got to be aware of taxes mm -hmm. here. Now, big business has 500 employees or more. How much do they pay? Typically around the world, about 20%. Now, why is it that big business people pay less than small business? Well, basically, the government wants the government wants us to do certain things, and they'll give us incentives if if we do them. And what they want out of a big business is they want employment. So they want to create employment because that creates stability in the country. Jobs. Jobs, right? And so the more jobs you create, actually, the more tax benefit you get. Well, look at Amazon right now. They're looking at moving their company. How many tax benefits are they getting? Oh my heavens, they pay very, very little tax. Uh, Amazon does, and, and they pay, you know, you talk about all those different kinds of taxes. Not only do they pay very little income tax, but they're also paying very little sales tax and employment taxes and all those others because they're getting benefits from multiple types of government, the federal government, the state government, the city government. Is that, how, government. is that how Elon Musk started his battery factory in Nevada? Well, yeah, I mean, Elon Musk, he gets huge research and development tax benefits, which by the way, that's a tax benefit that is, tr that is available in most countries more than the US. Right, so if you're gonna stay small, I mean, it's a good place to start, but you're gonna really wanna come over here eventually. And then the professional investors. See, these guys are passive. These guys invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds. They save money. They're passive guys. They pay the highest taxes. But how much does a professional investor, like this is like Shark Tank, how much do these guys pay? So they can pay as little as 0%. Right. They can actually completely eliminate their tax. And this is called a financial statement. What makes the cash flow game different from Monopoly, which my, how my rich dad taught me via Monopoly, is my rich dad also taught me about financial statements. So the cash flow is the only game with a financial statement. So really simply, when you look at a financial statement, there's income, expense, assets, liabilities. There's one more thing in the cash flow game on the financial statement you'll see. It's the most important statement of all. It's called the statement of cash flow, it's off to the side here. Mm -hmm. So 
If you're going to be an entrepreneur or a capitalist, you have to have one of these. If you're going to be a rich, you have to have one of these. But 99% of all high school students leaving school and college have no idea what this is. You have FICO scores, you know, but you don't know what this is. No. So when a banker asks you for your financial statement, they want to see how smart you are here. So let me tell you why school makes st students poor. So really simply, it's this. <laughs> Let's say I have a master's in arts. Master of arts degree, right? Yeah. Or a bachelor of arts degree. Yeah. Do I learn anything about income? No. <laughs> what about Greek mythology? Oh, there you go. That's I very important. I learned nothing <laughs> about income. And we wonder why kids are leaving school yeah. or young generation looking for that high paying job, but they now let me ask anything. you this. If you have a, um, a de degree in technology, mm -hmm. do you learn anything about assets? Never. <laughs> so you could be a techie and you know nothing about yeah. this. You could be a techie and know nothing about this. You see, when a banker looks at your financial statement, they're looking at the mirror of you. Mm -hmm. This is a reflection of you. Mm -hmm. And if you got Jack here and Jack here, then you're not that smart financially. Yeah. So the reason the cash flow game is such an important game, it teaches you what is important to your banker or for a capitalist or for an entrepreneur, is that an entrepreneur has got to know how to increase their income. Yeah. And an entrepreneur has got to know how to create assets. Mm -hmm. If you don't know those two things, you should not be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You should be an employee.